Hey everyone, it's Chad, and today I'm going to be putting together this finger press brake uh, that gets added to a 20 ton press from Harbor Freight. And I'm going to be doing a couple other upgrades to that 20 ton press. I found that once I got the Langmar Pro set up and I started doing some cuts, that without putting a lot of relief cuts or modifying the thickness of the metal, I, would, I didn't currently have a way to bend that metal properly. So this should do the trick. Let's get started. All right, so normally I don't follow directions very well, but here is everything laid out. This is the first thing they tell you to do in the instructions. Basically lay it all out so you know that you have all your parts. And it looks like I have everything I need. Let's move to the next step. All right, so the next step is to press these two bars into both ends of this piece right here. They say to leave an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch. I'm just gonna, I just made a little spacer to put at the bottom and press this into. It's a little bit smaller than the hole, so it'll, in theory, it should allow this to be pretty much uh, square when it goes in, because it's gonna be pressed up against something that's flat, in theory. Uh, the other option is to possibly mark the bottom of this and then press up to the mark. I figured that the chances of getting it square would be a little better using a flat piece of metal. Uh, you should have a 20 ton Harbor Freight press, press if you're putting this kit together, so that's what I'm going to be using. Alright, well it turns out theory is uh, just that theory, it's not fact. So. As you can see, this is very far off, so I'm going to just tap it over. Let's check this. I don't know. I don't know if this is a good method or not. I'm assuming that these two edges are square. So I'm not exactly sure how critical this measurement is, but it just dawned on me I can use this. It's got the little thing that pokes out at the bottom to see how far in. So I got uh, 3 16 on that side, 3 16 3 16 3 16 just so you can see. Alright, once everything's tacked up, go ahead and check. Make sure you have everything square still. So I gotta tap this just a little bit. Now that everything's square, I just want to go ahead and fill in this space and uh, then I'm gonna grind that smooth. Next thing you want to do is tack these in place and you just want to make sure they're flat. I'm going to tack it here and on the other side. All right, so I'm going to use this uh, center finder to uh, find the center of this. And you could eyeball it, but I don't know. I just want to try to make sure I get this as close as I possibly can. I'm just going to scratch it here. You can turn it around this way just to double check, but if I hold that straight up, it's going to give me some guide as to where the center of this is. And then we're going to tack that to this plate without tacking it to this plate.
All right, now you just want to make sure that this actually slides up and down on the rods. And if it doesn't, you have to make adjustments. I just uh, wanted to point out, I did a small bevel on the end of this, so when I put this on, it won't interfere with that weld right there. All right, the next step is to weld these two studs in. It's important you do that because once the uh, bottom die is in place, these screws will not be accessible anymore. I'm just going to hold them in place using these wing nuts and then I'll remove them. Before welding this in, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a button on the bottom of this, just flatten it off. Alright, it was rocking a little bit before, and now it's not, so I'm going to say it was necessary. Alright, next you want to attack the four corners, and then alternate sides. Uh, about an inch at a time until you have this in nice nice and uh, you don't want to do a full bead you just want to do like an inch an inch you don't even need to weld this in completely just I don't know, three or four welds on each side but you want to alternate so you're not warping this as you weld I wasn't sure exactly how to get this exactly where it needed to be. I figured the surest way to do that would be to come over here, install it temporarily, and tech weld this collar, which is the last thing I have to do. So I actually uh, use the Allen screw and tighten it down. And now I'm just gonna tack weld it on each side. I can pull it all apart. You don't wanna, there's a back piece here. You absolutely do not want to weld that to this. So just attack weld on each side to get placement. And then I'm going to uh, take it apart and weld it up. Just. 
All right, we're just about done. Uh, slip this on here. Hopefully that fits on the way it's supposed to. Well, there you go. Uh, <clears throat> my very first thing being bent on a finger brake using the 20 ton Harbor Freight press. And I welded the whole thing up with my HTP MIG welder. And man, I tell you, there's some beautiful welds on, on that. There's some, uh, some marginal welds as far as looks, but there's some really beautiful welds and I have no question that that's gonna do the job now why did I buy a finger brake I bought it because when I cut this out on the HTP uh, with the HTP plasma cutter on the Langmar CNC I cut it out of 3 16 and it was supposed to be cut out of something much thinner so rather than throw this out I wanted to be able to utilize it and there's no question that it's, uh, it's not perfect, but it's definitely uh, going to do the job for what I was going to use it for. And it's basically just a shelf bracket. But now that I have the capability of bending 3 16 and quarter inch and probably even thicker, that opens up a whole lot of projects that I can do on the Langmire that I wasn't able to do before. Uh, I was doing some relief cuts, and I think that's a good way to get around needing a heavier break, but that also means that I can I can cut even thicker things, put some relief cuts, and bed them on the finger break. So again, it opens up a lot of possibilities, and I'm really excited about having this tool in the shop. And as you saw in the video, there was a lot of hand pumping. I've got some further upgrades that are coming, and maybe I'll do another video on that. If not, I'll just share it on Instagram. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want your name in my videos, uh, please support me on Patreon. I'm doing this full time now, and I can absolutely use your support. That said, I know a lot of people are out of work right now or are at home, uncertain about their future. Absolutely, if you're not in a position to support me, I do not want you trying to do that. I guess that's it. I, that's all I have for today. I hope I hope everybody is getting through this crazy time and doing well. And I really do appreciate you watching. Please, if you have any questions about this, uh, ask them down in the uh, comment section. If I don't know the answer, I'll find it out for you. I don't know what else to say. I'm just talking. I'm rambling. Y'all have a great day. I've been out here a long time. I'm a little tired.